Hi there, welcome to this build of a 40 inch wingspan Clancy Aviation Speedy B which is going to be powered by this lovely four stroke, it's an OS FS26 and we downloaded these plans off the Outer Zone website great set of plans which you can see behind me, really extensive you can see here in front of me we've essentially got most of the plane structure finished yes there's still a little bit of balsa to add here and there but before we do that we need to start setting up the controls for the main fuselage, main part of the plane I said the main part because we have done the aileron servos and fitted the ailerons now in this video what I'm proposing to do is to get the fuel tank fitted which I haven't done yet I know roughly where it's going to go and I need to get the linkages and the servo fitted for the uh, engine, for the throttle so I'll show you what I'm going to do right, well, this is the fuel tank I'm going to be using it's a 4 ounce and that's what's specified on the plans but also it'll be a good size for this engine if we look on the plans it suggests putting them putting it way up front here but I don't like that idea it's a little bit too constricted you won't get much foam around it it'll probably be touching this top if we're not careful and there's not much room for a throttle linkage down the side so I'm going to be moving it back to here which is much close to the CG which is is a good thing and I can get a little bit more height more foam around it and there's plenty of room down the side for the throttle linkage I will need to trim this former a little bit but that former is a lot deeper than shown on the plans I just left it like that knowing I would need to cut it out but thinking I would make it stronger and then cut out just what I needed to so I'm going to make a little bit of a platform for the tank to fit there I think I'll end up needing to put a little bit of a shelf at the front to support the tank but then a shelf or a locking bar at the back that allows me to get the tank in and out so I can put it in rest the front on the shelf and put a bar to hold it up at the back the gap between the spars isn't big enough to allow the tank to go in that way and anyway I want to shear web that section of the uh, of the wing and um, and, and give it a lot more strength and also the throttle servo is going to mount on the back of that shear webbing now the throttle linkage itself is going to be via a piece of plastic tubing this has got a 3mm internal diameter and I'm going to use a piece of music wire that's 1.2mm now that will give me it will give me a positive linkage but it will allow a little bit of up and down here movement which will allow me to cope for the arc of the uh, of the throttle linkage because this throttle linkage isn't going to be moving in a straight line it's going to be going in a slight arc and it, it finishes quite close to the firewall there so having a little bit of movement up and down in that while still giving me a positive movement will be beneficial because of that arc now if I turn this round we can see we're going to put whoops let's just bring that down onto the tail better we're going to put some shear webbing on the, the back of the uh, of there and I'm going to mount the servo on that for the throttle and the servo that I'm using is this uh, Emacs servo and if I turn that around you can just see the specification I've used these quite a bit and I quite, uh, I quite like them and I'm going to mount that upside down in that location and so I'm going to mount it upside down and I'm going to have a little bit of a shelf here this is the cockpit area, a little bit of a shelf covering the back of the servo or the bottom of the servo so you can't see it and then access to the servo and setting it up will be from the underside of the wing here which is always going to be left open not only for the tank to go in but as I said access to this servo and also the wires that will connect through 
So I'm going to start to set this up now and we'll come back and have a look at that in a bit. Okay, quick update on where we are with the throttle linkage. I've got the plastic tubing in. Obviously it's not glued in yet still, and it still needs trimming down to size. But I'll do that in a bit. And I've got it coupled up to the servo. I think you can just see the end of the wire there moving in and out. Just unplug this. And I said earlier this was 1.2 mil. I think this wire is actually 1.5. Now I've got some blocks, balsa blocks here. On this side, this is going to be the only fixing for this tube. I'm going to wrap the tube in some uh, masking tape and then epoxy it. This end will have a little bit of upward, up and down movement, just a fraction in the firewall there to allow it to cope for the arc of the throttle arm. This tube down here will go side to side and that will be free to move. Like I say, just epoxied in place here. Now I've put a, these couple of blocks and they not only hold the, uh, the tube, but they also position the tank front to back. The tank will be in a, a foam case, which I'm going to make, or padding, and that will just come forward and uh, with a bit of foam, and those blocks will just stop it going too far forward. So they'll position it within that nacelle. Now the height of the tank, you can see I've cut out this former here. The height of the tank now comes up to about a millimetre off the, the height of the spray bar, so it'll be absolutely fine. Quite pleased with that. Next job is to make the platform for that, which I'm going to do in a minute. Now we can see back here we've got the 116 balsa shear webbing, and we've got a bit of a slot cut in the back there for the, uh, for the control rod. Now if we tip this up, we can see we've got the servo mounted on a couple of beach blocks and some one and a half mil ply which is forming the shear webbing and then some 116 bolter for the rest of it. And if I turn that over, we can see the, uh, the servo mounted there. And if I connect this up, I'm not sure if the servo arm is actually connected in the center of where it should be, but it will it'll give you an indication of how it works anyway. So we can see yeah, that's working. Actually, yeah, it needs to be, it'll be adjusted when we come to, to fit this finally. But you can see the, uh, how that's working. And what I'm going to do is, if I turn this back over, is I'm going to, as I said earlier, I'm going to make a little bit of a shelf here in the cockpit. It won't be as wide as this, it'll just be half that width, which will just cover that servo and just make it look a lot better. And probably a little vertical piece as well. Just to kind of neaten it up and make the cockpit just look nice and uh, nice and clean inside. So I'll get on with uh, finishing the coupling and doing that tank. Just one very quick point I forgot to mention, and that's when I cut the hole for the access for this uh, throttle linkage into the shear webbing, I was concerned that I just weakened or, or left it a little bit of a weak area here with this spar with no shear webbing. So I've put on a piece of balsa across here, 316 balsa, that just thickens that up and provides a little bit more strength in that area. Okay, definitely time for an update now. I've got the throttle servo finished and the tank in. You can see nice smooth action on that. I'm really pleased with how that's working. And we can just see down here, we've got the throttle linkage. Hopefully you can see that just moving side, from side, side to side. In fact, if I turn that over, we can probably see that even better. And yeah, there we go. We can see the servo and how the linkage is free of foam and clear of tank and it just allows that outer sheath to move sidewards to cope with the arc of the arm there. And that's, that's running really nice. I'm, I'm, I'm quite pleased with that. Now, if I turn this back over again, and we'll talk about the tank. So I've got the tank encased in foam and held in place. I've got the holes in the firewall. There's two holes here in the firewall. One's the engine feed, one's the pressure feed for the tank and 
you can see the end of the tank just there. Now there's going to be a filler tube as well but that's going to be coming out of the very central of the nacelle top and I'm going to use one of these like little button feeds and I'm going to have that placed in the top there uh, kind of reminiscent of an old car radiator I suppose so I thought that would look quite nice on the top there now if we have a look at the tank as I said it's encased in foam and I've put on this strip here just to stop the back of the tank lifting up too much because we want to keep it nice and level and when this covers on we push it in from the bottom we could end up pushing the back up too far and uh, and then we lose kind of fuel capacity really so if I turn that over we can see holding the tank in we just try and I think I'm probably better holding this holding the tank in we've got a couple of straps of balsa which we can take out and that just slides forward that slides forward as well and just lifts out a little bit tight originally I had a, a plate here that was glued in but I removed that because it made it awkward to get the tank in but also it's if I don't have a plate there it gives more access to allow me to get to this area here which is where I'm going to have that button feed and uh, be able to tighten that up so I just thought it would be better just giving more access now if I just put this down and if we lift up the foam and we can lift the tank out and then I've just cut a little pocket out of foam there's a bit at the back there that just stops it sliding back and as I said just a, a pocket of foam cut a piece of this is just upholstery foam and um, if you've got a really sharp scalpel this just cuts out like that lovely so the next job now is to think about fuel proofing this because I don't want to be gluing this in yet or covering this over without fuel proofing the back of here because I'm going to lose access and as far as gluing this in once I've fuel proofed it I want to make sure that this hole here which allows that pipe to just move up and down a little bit is still nice and free it hasn't been blocked up with the uh, the fuel proofing but the question is where do I fuel proof normally I would fuel proof the whole of the kind of fuel tank bay but with this model I, I kind of don't see the point in fuel proofing up around here and if the fuel leaks it's going to disappear straight down into the fuselage and I'll just show you that so any fuel leak is not really going to wet around here too much it's just going to go straight down and into the bottom of the fuselage here so what I might do is just give this area here a very thin coat of fuel proofing and certainly I'm going to do this front section below the engine I'll do this top of the fuselage here this this cover below the engine and I'm going to do in in this section around the firewall because a bit of fuel might come through the fuel pipes it might come through here but I'm going to do very limited fuel proofing really I'm, I'm not going to do all of this area it's just adding weight and to fuel proof it I'm going to be using uh, epoxy just thin down with a little bit of 95% ethanol 30 minute epoxy so I think that is probably the next job to fuel proof around these areas and then we can start thinking about covering the uh, the servo and getting this hatch done quite looking forward to getting or not the hatch the kind of the top of the nacelle done well I've just done the fuel proofing and I've done inside the nacelle where I think it's useful to do but I haven't done any of the outside areas yet and I'll tell you why I want to put a colour on the firewall and I don't want to do that after the fuel proofing so I'm leaving this until I'm thinking about the colour scheme how it's going to be finished off and then that will be easy to fuel proof that 
and it'll be better when I've got the top on the nacelle as well. So I've perhaps not done quite as much that ne uh, as needs doing just at this moment. As I said, I use my 30 minute epoxy and some um, ethanol. If you want to see how I do that, have a look in the description below and there'll be a link to a video uh, showing that. So I've got to the point now where what's left is to cover the nacelle. And as soon as this fuel proof has, um, has set, it's still a bit tacky, I'm going to be putting a piece of balsa on top of that. Now on the plans it talks about laminating with two pieces of 116 balsa. What I might do is just try and do it in uh, 330 second and, and find some really nice soft balsa that's light because we want to keep the light weight down but that will bend around. I mean this piece for example it's, uh, it's quite bendy on this side but this side is quite hard. So I'm going to have a look through my balsa stash see what I can find and I'm going to get that covered. I'm just going to hold it down and see a real simple job hopefully and then I'm going to get this cover done on the servo. Right well I've now got this finished, the nacelle, the engine mount with the throttle and I'm really excited to see this nacelle covered. It looks lovely and that 332nd 2.4mm balsa has gone on really nice and it's really quite solid even though it's really soft balsa. I can't think why you would need to laminate it with two pieces of, of 116 really and uh, you can see it looks lovely. I'm really pleased with it and you can see the throttle linkage there on the side. I've also, I'll just come around, I've also done the, um, the cockpit area. You can see there I've covered the servo, put in an angle piece and a floor to the, uh, to the cockpit there. And I still need to sort out exactly what I'm doing with a pilot. And I might need to put some kind of little seat and somewhere I've got a, a headrest that will go on there for the pilot. But obviously until I got the pilot I don't know how big he is. So it's really exciting because the nacelle was the very first thing that I constructed for this and I left the uh, top off, the covering, until now and it's great to see it on. I've still got inside here, now I've got the top on the nacelle to do a little bit of fuel proofing but I'll do that when I come to fuel proof some of the, uh, some of the rest of the plane. Now I haven't tried this on here yet to see what it looks like so Let's get this on and we'll see what we think. Yeah, there you go. Oh, that's nice. I'm really pleased to see that looking so good. Well, I'm going to draw this video to a close now. And I've really enjoyed getting this done, you can probably tell. And because uh, it really sets off the plane. Now, in the next video, I'm going to be thinking... Uh, well, no, I'm not going to be thinking. I'm going to be installing, I think, the servos for the elevator and the rudder. And I also need to, I've decided I'm going to modify this um, spring tailwheel on here because I really don't think it's strong enough. I mentioned this a uh, couple of videos ago, it might have been in the last video, I can't remember. So I'm going to get that done and it'll be nice to get those rear control surfaces uh, running. So anyway, thanks very much for watching. I hope you found it useful, I hope you found it interesting. And please, come back and follow us in this build of a Clancy Aviation Speedy B.